Hi everyone, welcome back to Lori's Boston Found, where thrifted is the new black. I brought Lulu here just to do my intro. Say hello, my baby. <laughs> um, we have this beautiful sunny day here today in central Massachusetts, and I wanted to come in and say hello to you. Today is February 15th, and I hope that everyone had a wonderful Friday night celebrating Valentine's Day. Um, but we are about halfway through the month of February and a month and a half into 2020. And I thought it was a good time to reflect and see what things are trending in my Poshmark closet, what is selling. Um, so this is going to be featuring my top 10 items that have sold above $50. So they range from $52 to $125. And then I have some brands that I'm gonna mention and items that flipped right at the $50 mark because I had a handful that I thought would be worth sharing. So I'm taking a little bit of a break from Thriftless February to do this video for you. Um, thank you so much for everybody's support this month. And I'm so excited for the people who have joined me in eliminating their death piles and making some cash out of money that's right in their home. So, um, but this morning when I was looking over comments, I had a viewer say to me, and I loved this comment, she just said, um, you know, basically, I'm so happy you're making progress with Thriftless February, but I can't wait until the month is over because I miss your hauls. <laughs> and I miss my hauls too. And um, even though I've been shopping here and there, it's been like, oh, I'll pick up three items here and go home and list them right away, or I'll pick up one item here. So I haven't had one of those big adrenaline rush hauls in a while. So I miss them too. So anyways, I just figured I would do a little video, something different than Thriftless February content. So here we go. So I'm gonna start, how about I start with the $50 items because I had a handful and some of these are very familiar brands and I'm just gonna go over them really quickly. So every single one of these items sold for exactly $50. Maybe it included um, discounted shipping. I didn't record that. The first item was this great Burberry plaid um, button down shirt, men's shirt. It sold for $50. It was in beautiful condition. I want to say I may have paid like $8 for this at Savers. Um, I didn't write down the cost of all of them, although some of these I remember. The next item were um, these pair of Hunter boots. These sold for $50 and these sold really fast. Um, Hunter boots are a staple. Anytime I find them, I grab them, especially these tall boots, especially black boots. They are just an automatic um, quick flip. So these were in great condition. I feel like it could have held out for a little bit more, but I got an offer right away on these. These must have come through as an offer because it was a fast flip. $50 on those. So three out of the seven items that were in the $50 mark were all um, were shoes. So that's obviously worth noting. I think most people know by now that shoes have potential to have a great return on investment. And these all did. Those Hunter boots, I think I paid $4 for at Savers. These next pair of shoes I picked up at the bins in Maine when I went with my friend Daniela and Mira, and there are these, these gorgeous Cole Haan pumps. And I think I had these listed for $65 or $68, and I received a $50 offer, which I was happy to take. So these cost less than $2 at the bins in Maine. They were brand new. They still had the tag on the bottom, and they retailed for well over $100. So that was great, though. I was excited about those. Uh, the next thing I wanted to share were these Lulu Lemon Wonder. I almost said that like Ryan and Jack, Lulu Lemon. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just caught myself. They're funny if you don't watch them. They're great. Um, so these Lulu Lemon Wonder Unders, I believe I sold these to a viewer. So thank you very much. I sold, um, this is another brand that every time I find it, I want to pick it up. And that is Barefoot Dreams. Every time I see a Barefoot Dreams item, I know that it's money in the bank. And I picked up this cardigan sweater. The next item that sold for $50 was this great pair of Tommy Hilfiger Sherpa line boots. These were just very unique and beautiful. Um, I think I had them listed similar to the Cole Haan around $65, $68, and I received a $50 offer on them. Um, but all of these items, with the exception of the Burberry, were very low cost items to pick up. And even the Burberry shirt was only $8. So 
You can tell you've been thrifting for a while when you say that $8 is not low cost for a Burberry shirt. So um, anyway, and the last two items um, are basketball jerseys that my husband and I ordered for my nephews. And um, there was an error that the company made. They hadn't shipped them out to us. And then we called. Um, it had been over a month since we, since we had ordered them and Christmas was approaching. So they overnighted them to us. And then like three weeks later, the other original two showed up like two months after. The Bucks were having a great season because in two days time, both shirts sold for full asking price, which was $50 for these kids new with tag jerseys. So that was pretty exciting. After the first one sold, I got an offer on the second one like a day later. And I said to my son, Rocco, are the Bucks doing very well? And he said, yeah, they're having a tremendous season. So I'm not even gonna try to pronounce this guy's name. He is Greek and I'm just gonna put his jersey up here. If you are familiar with the team, you may know how to pronounce his name. I have no idea. I am a Boston Celtics girl, um, but I, I did pick these up because my nephews were into them. And yeah, so I the second shirt, I think I received a $35 offer. That's when I said to Rocco, what's going on? The first shirt sold yesterday and they'd been lift, listed like probably for a month or a few weeks at least. And he said, oh no, those are going to sell fast. And then I didn't, I don't know if I countered or I don't even think I had time to counter the $35 offer on the second shirt and then it sold for full price. So I was really excited about those. So all those items sold for $50, some real familiar names like Barefoot Dreams and Hunter and Burberry those are all Lululemon, all things that you would expect to sell um, on a regular basis. Now I'm going to give you these top 10 items, so the, the highest selling, and I'm gonna start with the lowest. So this one, and some of these I've mentioned in my Instagram stories, if you don't follow me already on Instagram, um, I'll have the link below. I am Lori's, I'm at Lori's Boston Found. Um, and I often give updates on sales over on Instagram if you're interested in seeing things on a more regular basis. So you, some of these you may recognize from my Instagram stories. But anyway, um, Pam and Gella was a, a brand I was not familiar with. I came across this kind of like sweatshirt with black uh, sequins, really beautiful, like eye cat pattern on it. Just the slouchy off the shoulder. My daughter modeled it for me. It was really cute. Um, that sold for $52 and it sold relatively quickly. That was a brand I was unfamiliar with, so I did want to share that with you. A few of the brands here, two in particular, I had never heard of before, um, so that's one of them. I picked that up on style, but I did run comps. I'm running comps more and more, especially in an effort to reduce how much I have in my basement. It's just essential to run comps sometimes. If I'm not running comps, I want to make sure that the fabric content and the quality of the piece is great. So, um, and I, I will give an example of that. So Lululemon is making another appearance here. So I got this duffel bag. This is the second time I have found an athletic wear duffel bag in the um, travel section, like the luggage section of Savers, and both have resulted in $50 plus sales. So this one is called Lululemon's Destined for Greatness bag. I had this listed really high because some people had it incredibly high, like over $100. Um, and then I think I reduced it to 90, 80, and it had a ton of attention, but it just wasn't, it wasn't warranting the price, I think. Um, but I think I got, I think I got more caught up in what people were listing it for and ignoring maybe what it was selling for because I was comparing myself to what other people were listing it for. But it ended up selling for $55. And I think this was fair given the fact that it wasn't, it had like very minor wear, wear to it, but it wasn't brand new. Um, but I was really happy with $55. This was, I think, $12.99 at Savers and I had a 20% off coupon. So I did pay about $10 for that, which I typically don't pay that much at Savers, but I knew this would sell when I looked at the comp. So that sold for $55. So next on my list, if I'm going from lowest to highest price, is a Patagonia Better Sweater that sold for $60. Anytime I find a Patagonia Better Sweater, I am picking it up. I'm not looking at it right now. I think this was a full zip Better Sweater. Um, I have a couple Better Sweaters that have been sitting for a while. I almost think I should relist them because it doesn't make sense that they haven't like sold yet. But um, Patagonia is a staple in my closet. I pick it up. 
especially the better sweaters. Um, okay, next. So this is an example of something that sold not based on brand, but based on fabric content. So I love to pick up alpaca sweaters. Um, even if I don't know the brand, if I put alpaca in my description and in my title, it definitely draws attention to the item. And this piece was actually gorgeous. It was like a cream colored cape with really interesting, almost like cable knit detail, just lovely. And it was in a larger size. I tried it on, I loved it for myself. Um, but I, I decided to list it because I wanted the money. So anyways, it sold for $65. I believe this was a full price sale and I was really excited. It was just like one of those idle Tuesdays and I got the notification. I was like, hey, that sold for full price. That was one of my trust your gut pieces that I was really happy I picked it up. Um, and I believe that was like, I don't know. I don't know if that was Savers or the Bands. I want to say Savers, but I'm not sure going to next. Okay, the next item. Oh, I haven't shared any information on this and I want to spend a little time talking about this because if you are somebody who has been watching my videos for a while, you know that in my what sold videos, I tend I the the way I used to format them, I had a buy Felicia section where I was like so happy something sold and had been in my closet forever and I was so happy to see it go. And for the most part, my buy Felicia pieces are ones that I don't love having in my closet. They were like bad buys and it's been there for 500 days and it sold for $12. But in this case, this is a vintage Gunny Sacks dress that finally sold. So I feel like I could do a whole video on Gunny Sacks, but I'm gonna take a few moments to talk about it here. Um, I have purchased, I've been fortunate enough to find four vintage um, Gunny Sacks dresses. These were made in the 70s and 80s, and um, I think mostly in the 70s or very early 80s. And most of them, or at least the ones that I have picked up, are um, like prairie style. Like think in terms of Coachella and um, just very hippie boho vibe. The designer is Jessica McClintock, and this was like a like a line of Jessica McClintock. So. First time I found a Gunny Sacks dress, I was thrilled. I was at the bins um, and I sold it on eBay. It sold for $118, if my memory serves me. It was $112, $116, $118. I think it was $118. And it took a few weeks to sell, but I knew the brand and I knew that it would sell. Then I went to this random estate sale that looked like it was the outside of a horror story before I went in <laughs> to the garage. I almost didn't go in, but I found two Gunny Sacks Prairie dresses in mint condition at this sale, Then they were $2 each. So I was beside myself. I listed both. Um, the one I listed first, I listed for $149. It sold in seven minutes, full priced. That led me to this like manic state, like, oh my gosh, I got to get this other one listed so quickly. I'm going to list it for $150. And I was contemplating listing it higher, but I list the second prairie dress had a little less detail. Um, and my daughter modeled both of these dresses for me, which I do believe made a difference in the first one. The pictures just came out great on the first one. Um, then there was this blue prairie de dress. I listed this for $149 and it has been in my closet ever since. I have now lowered the price to $119 and it still sits there. I think the pictures came out great. I don't know that this is any different than that first one. It just goes to show you that sometimes it's all about timing. The dress that I sold, it just sold yesterday. I had this marked, I think maybe even, I think I had it for $159 on eBay because this was like a Renaissance style dress and some of these went for over $200. Some are listed for over $200 on Etsy. But as a practical matter, I feel like the Prairie dress, just kind of like that light cotton, somebody could pull that off at like a concert or a festival or, you know, it's just lighter. This heavy velvet Renaissance corset style dress is much more specific, but it's also much more unique. This one did have issues though. There was a tear in the back of the waist. I disclosed everything. There were a couple stains. So maybe I did have it priced high given the condition. Well, anyways, this has sat forever. And this would also be a buy Felicia one because it's very heavy. It's bulky to store. I was so thrilled. I lowered the price on Poshmark to $75. I'd kept it higher on eBay because I just feel like that's a bigger market. Um, 
and it didn't sell on eBay. It had over 350 views on eBay. A lot of people were watching it, but I also think on eBay, a lot of people who watch your items are other resellers who also have an item that they're curious about selling. I know I've done that before. If I'm curious where I wanna price something, I'll look at a similar item on eBay and I will watch it just to see what it sells for and then I'll get a notification when it sells. So sometimes watchers aren't always potential buyers on eBay, I have found. So anyway, finally, this Renaissance dress sold and I am so excited and I just shipped it out today and I hope the person who gets it, loves it. And I still have the Blue Prairie dress in stock. So I feel like four dresses, three similar styles, four very different stories, one on eBay after a month, one in seven minutes for $149, one different style, flawed, sold for half the price of that Prairie dress, um, and one is still listed. Sometimes you you hear people talk about these Bolo brands and they're so exciting to find and I was equally as excited every time I found a gunny sack dress. I'm so happy this one sold. But anyways, that was a very long explanation for that sale. Just pause the video because I wanted to get my iPad and get the name of this jacket. And I know I'm going to pronounce it wrong. But the next item that sold was another vintage piece. And I really love picking up vintage Bogner, which is like a, a ski, ski wear brand. Um, and I've had some luck. I sold an all black like 1980s ski suit, one piece, for I believe like $190 on eBay. And then um, now I've recently sold this vintage um, embroidered coat. It had like a mountain range on the back. It was bright and colorful and black and orange. Okay, Ran Ralpaca Altiplano embroidered jacket. I had to look that up. There were a couple comps on this. I had it listed at like 160. Um, and I lowered the price and I had gotten some lower offers early on, but in the end, I ended up getting a $95 offer for it. And this sold on January 15th. So, you know, people are already starting to think about spring in January and February. So most offers that I'm receiving on winter items that are reasonable, I am taking. So I believe I paid $16 for this at Savers and then I had a coupon. So probably around 13, 12 or $13 and it sold for $95 and it's so unique and I bet someone is gonna love it. And it was a popover, like a half zip, really unique. I don't know like when it's from, I'm guessing the 90s, but it was a really cool piece. So that was my second vintage piece that sold for a lot. The next item that sold for $95 were, and this is the one that I said, um, I'm not sure it may be vintage, but I found these men's fry boots at the bins. They were super heavy. Um, Anytime I find fry boots, I'm picking them up. I had these listed maybe for like 140 and I just recently got a $95 offer on them. Um, they did say, I did only get four stars on this um, and the buyer said that they could be cleaner. So sometimes my pictures, because I use photo apps that brighten them up, sometimes it almost hides flaws and that's not a good thing. So I try to disclose when things you know, maybe even look a little bit better than my pictures are showing um, because the buyer just said that these could have been cleaner. So, I mean, I guess I would agree with that. You're spending $95 plus your $7 shipping. You want to make sure you're getting something you're really excited about. So I felt bad that maybe I didn't clean them up as, as much as this buyer wanted, but four, four stars is not terrible, but I kind of like the five star average. Um, but anyways, $95 out the door and still for my buyer, a great price on fry boots. Um, so that was $95. Oh, I missed my $93 mark. So we're backtracking a little bit here. I got this beautiful Zara military jacket and it's so, I just saw this and I thought, oh my gosh, this is great. And the reason I'm excited to feature this piece is because Zara is not always something you associate with a high priced item. Uh, I have a lot of Zara that sits. I pass on a lot of Zara basics, but Zara is a pretty trendy company and they do make some really gorgeous, unique pieces. And I loved the ribbon detail on the cuffs on this military jacket and the comps were fantastic. So when I picked this up, I kind of knew I had something special, but I wasn't sure what it would actually go for. I had this listed at 125. I have two more pieces to go over. So my second to top selling piece 
was this Club Monaco sweater. And again, a brand that is so good, but is hit or miss with sales. Um, I was shopping um, at the Boston Bins and I picked this piece up. This lasted less than a week in my closet. I picked it up because it was cashmere. It was in beautiful condition. It was Club Monaco. So right off the bat, you know, it's like over $200 retail, but I have some really beautiful Club Monaco pieces that are over $200 retail that have been in my closet for six months. So I don't know. I picked it up and I, I guess, was thinking, oh, maybe I'll get $30 to $50 for this. I went home. It happened to be a style that was on their current website for $298. Not on sale, nothing, just straight up on their website, $298. I was thrilled. And it was a black, is black, as you can see. Um, anyways, it sold for $100. I had it listed maybe $169 or something. It was in really beautiful condition. And um, I got a $100 offer and I was not going to counter that. So I accepted the $100 offer. I got a five-star rating, sold in less than a week. I was super excited about that because of the bins in Boston, every piece is $1.75. So that was a great flip. Nothing like a $100 flip on a item that cost you under $2 that you sell in five days. Like those are the, those are the best of the best, but those are also pretty rare. Usually it's your $25, $30 item that sits for a couple of weeks. My last item, also vintage, and also has brought me the most money in 2020. I sold this vintage mink for $125. Um, I had it listed for $349. This is, you know, when I get items in that I'm not sure about or that has comps all over the place, sometimes I do take my chances and list high. Sometimes it pays off. Sometimes I end up like saying, gosh, I wish I had just listed, priced this to sell from the get-go and just made my money, didn't share it for six months. So the designer of this mink coat was Clyde Bertram. So this was vintage. Um, it's out of Flint, Michigan, and definitely has a following. Some of these pieces went for a ton of money online, but um, I'm going to show it up here as well as just scroll through some of, it was just gorgeous coat. I picked this up. It had the monograms of the original, the monogram of the original owner, but I picked this coat up at a yard sale. I paid $10 for this mink and I bought it last spring. So I've had it for a very long time. That sold for $125 with a $10 investment and it did sell on Poshmark and that was something I did cross post to eBay as well. Some people are pro eBay, some people are pro Poshmark and you just don't know and I don't cross post everything to eBay but I do tend to cross post these higher ticket items. The Bogner jacket was cross posted on eBay, the Mink jacket was cross posted on eBay, the Club Monaco, I don't know if I had cross posted that. Um, those might have been the only things that I cross. Oh, the gunny sacks. So those three vintage pieces, I do cross post to eBay because I feel like eBay has more vintage eyes on your pieces, but they all ended up selling on Poshmark. So when I add up all of these pieces, there are 18 items. I gave you 10 items that were over $50. And then I had eight items that sold for $50 exactly. My total is $1,215. I hope you enjoyed this video of what sold in 2020 for over $50. Comment below and let me know some of your great sales this month. Are you seeing trends? How are you doing with vintage pieces? Do you sell vintage? Um, do you have certain pieces that you know are like an automatic $50, like those Hunter boots or a Patagonia better sweater? Let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back soon.